let's get into the distinction between formal and informal fallacies. First off, there are different forms of argument. Okay, let's talk about the most common argument you might encounter in a textbook or in some kind of paper modus ponens, which goes something like this. First premise is something like a conditional. If A, then B. The second premise affirms the antecedent, which is A, and that gets us a conclusion, um, B. So if A, then B. A, therefore, B. Very simple argument, okay? There are others like um, if A, then B, if B, then C, then if A, then C, or um, that's a hypothetical syllogism. Um, there are probably six or seven other forms that you might see, and of course, that's a whole another discussion. But let's just focus on the first one that I gave, modus ponens. Okay. Let's say someone was given an argument, and let's say they were trying to give a kind of modus ponens. And their first uh, premise was something like, if A, then B. But their second premise is B. And they had concluded A from it. So rather than putting the antecedent in the second premise, they put the consequent in the second premise. Okay? And they yet still have concluded something like A. This is called affirming the consequent. They've messed up the form. Hence, it's called a formal fallacy. They've messed up. It's just an invalid form. The idea of formal fallacy is strongly tied to invalid argument, an invalid argument, okay? And one of the ways you can identify a formal fallacy or some kind of invalid argument is that you can accept all the premises and still not going to get you the conclusion, okay? Let's substitute it, just for example. Remember, they said if A, then B, B, and therefore A. So if they said, so if I substitute that with, with, with propositions, it's going to look like something like this. If some object is a plane, then that object has wings. This object has wings. Therefore, this object is a plane. Well, that's clearly false, guys, right? It could have wings and be a bird. Okay. So, but notice we can accept the premises, right? Um, we could accept that if planes, um, if some object was a plane, it would have wings. And we could accept that the object we're looking at has wings, right? Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't logically get us from those two propositions or those two premises. It doesn't logically get us to that, to A, right? That, you know, therefore it's a plane if it has wings. Okay. So let's move on to the uh, informal fallacy. Now, informal fallacies, if you just look at the variables, so if I said something, we'll go back to modus ponens, if A, then B, A, therefore B, you're not going to be able to identify an informal fallacy from just that. To identify an informal fallacy, one must substitute those variables for the proposition or the language, I should say, okay? So if I substitute a and B for their respective meanings or propositions, then you might identify an informal fallacy, but the form is fine. We can still get the conclusion with the premises, whether we accept them or not. Okay. So let me give you, let me, let me do that kind of substitution then. If everyone believes that the earth is round, then the earth is round. Second premise, everyone believes that the earth is round, therefore the earth is round. Now I could in principle accept those, um, if I accepted those premises, that gets us the conclusion. But the problem is what? That I'm not going to accept those premises, right? The first premise is an argument ad populum, right? Um, and that ad argument ad populum is an informal fallacy. The idea is that if everyone believes it, it doesn't make it true, okay? So the way we've identified that kind of fallacy is not looking at the form, but the content of the premises, okay? Language is tricky. And when, when language is tricky enough to get us a fallacy, right, we get an informal fallacy, um, given even if we have something like the right form. Okay. In my experience, these are the more common sorts of fallacies. Right? So I would go ahead and go on to the next set of videos where I will mostly identify informal fallacies. There's a long, long list of informal fallacies. 
Um, as you'll see that those are the more common ones that you might encounter in these in debate or in books or in whatever form of argument being presented. But I will also go over some of the um, examples of formal fallacies. So be on the lookout for those.